Okay, this video is to show you how to prep your Bristol board um, sheets so that you can paint acrylic uh, or oil on them. So we're gonna apply a couple of coats of gesso. So I'm gonna show you how to do the first coat um, and how I sort of determine where to tape things off. I typically about a quarter of an inch in. So you can see this one's already started. That one's on its third coat. So it should be ready to be sanded and then ready to paint. So first I had, I attached this sheet of, um, of Bristol to a rigid surface by taping it down. This will allow the paper to, um, to expand and contract on something that's rigid. Um, that way, uh, as it gets soaked, eventually once it's, this one dries, what will happen is it'll flatten out. If it doesn't flatten out completely, just give it some time. We'll put some stuff on top of it, like some books and things like that, and it'll eventually uh, flatten out. Um, so what I'm first doing is making sure that I have about a quarter of an inch at least. You can measure it out if you want. Uh, because we're doing just exercises, I'm not going to be too concerned about it, but you can be more meticulous than I'm being at the moment. Um, anyhow, the, the idea here is to get everything primed and prepped so that you can begin painting as quickly as possible. Now, the way that I approach this when I gesso these surfaces is essentially the same way that I would gesso a uh, canvas. And and that is by doing a kind of a cross-hatching um, approach. So I get my gesso, put it on here, and make sort of X's all across. Uh, I do that even on the paper, even though the tooth of the paper is not the same as canvas. The reason I do that on canvas is to ensure that the gesso makes it into the fibers of, of the fabric. So I'm using acrylic gesso. I've already stirred the gesso. So I have a nice consistency to it. There's a couple little things that fell in. That's why that's a little dirty. But basically I just put some of it on there. Just give myself a good amount. Not too much, not too little. And if I need to apply a little bit more. I can definitely do that. But essentially now what you're doing is just pushing the paint around. I try to put some in the corners to make sure that that gets nice and filled in. And don't take too long on this as uh, depending on the temperature, the gesso will begin to set or dry. And then I just push it around, going back and forth across my entire surface. There's no other sort of prepping for the paper. I don't wet the paper. I just take it as is. And then I'm gonna push this gesso around, going across in one direction. Doesn't matter if you go vertical or horizontal. And I go over it again. Be mindful of where you do it. Be mindful that you don't attach this onto like your, your um, kitchen table or something like that. You want to put it on a surface that's rigid um, that you can move around so you can do multiple sheets at the same time. Now that I've got it sort of covered, I take this foam brush and I put this one aside and I'll take this foam brush and I'll go across the entire thing to get rid of any extra texture, any marks that are a bit too heavy, too too deep. I don't want any 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 of the marks that I put with the brush as I'm putting on the gesso <clears throat> to direct the final surface of my painting. And this will also help spread it out, make it so I don't have to sand as much. If I was doing this on a um, on a canvas, I would let it dry and then I would sand in between. That way, any any of the fabric that starts to loosen up, any like sort of like a peely type of texture that you get, you can knock it down really well. Um, I usually gesso on paper, uh, especially on this Bristol board. Um, I'll gesso three coats, and then I'll sand the last one to get the desired uh, texture that that I that I'm actually looking for, depending on the kind of painting that I'm doing. So if it's something that's going to be very smooth, I make sure that I give this um, this surface a nice smooth finish. If I'm going to paint something with texture. Then I might leave it a little bit more coarse. I might hit it with like 60 grit sandpaper or like 100 
and I'll have a little bit more 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 uh, porous surface to go on. If um, if I want the surface to be really slick and smooth, barely uh, any any brush strokes visible, I might be using um, a synthetic bristle brush, and that'll be the thing that that uh, that'll ensure that I have absolutely no marks showing. So if I want sh marks showing, I make it more more of a rough surface. If I want very few marks showing or no marks at all, I make sure that I sand this surface as smoothly as I can, uh, going up to even 500 uh, grit sandpaper, or maybe even increasing the amount of coats that you give this paper up to five to seven. So that'll be up to you. But essentially, this is the process. Um, I let this dry and I hit it again. So I think this one's probably ready to get another coat uh, and I'll do the same thing. This one's now on its fourth coat. I want to make sure that I apply it nice and evenly. It also goes on a lot smoother once it has a couple of coats on there. The gesso will be um, a lot smoother, a lot quicker to get across. What you don't want to do also is glob it on. So you don't want to put a bunch of gesso on here and then try to push it around or try to smoothen it out and then find out that um, it was too much and now you have to wait a long period of time for it to dry in order for you to actually get going with your painting. So this one's actually getting pretty close to being at a good state where after this dries, I should be able to paint on it and, and actually protect that surface, that paper, so it doesn't deteriorate as the acrylic goes on it or even if I decided to paint with oils, uh, the oil does not deteriorate the paper. So this is looking pretty good. And once this dries, I should be able to start my painting. And this one's almost ready.